Hey guys, a few years back I posted the original Zoom H5 and H6 reviews on my channel. After reading the hundreds of comments that you guys left, I've created a new, far more detailed review in an attempt to answer as many questions as possible from you, the community. In this video, we are going to explore the differences between the Zoom H5 and Zoom H6 and we are going to figure out which one is best for you. Before we begin, I am going to point out that the Zoom H5 and Zoom H6 are two very similar recorders, but they are built for different purposes. As we go through the video, I am going to lay down the actual differences and explain what situations each option will be better suited for. The Zoom H5 only has two XLR slash TRS inputs, as opposed to the four built-in inputs on the Zoom H6. If you plan on doing journalism or recording one-on-one -on -one interviews, which will only require a maximum of two external microphones, the two inputs on the Zoom H5 will suffice. On the other hand, the four built-in inputs on the Zoom H6 gives you the ability to plug in four microphones, thus making it perfect for podcasts, recording demos, band recordings, and more. It is important to note that both recorders are modular and they can both use the EXH6 combo input capsule. This allows them to use two more XLR microphones, though neither recorder can provide phantom power to the extra module. So, when it comes to the number of inputs, the Zoom H6 is the clear winner. Even though both recorders have exceptional battery life, the Zoom H5's is shorter than that of the Zoom H6, according to Zoom. This was presumably measured without any external microphones connected to the device. Bear in mind that connecting two microphones to the H5 or four to the H6 will lower the battery life, especially if you're using phantom power. There are many different variables which would potentially affect the battery life of the device, but the takeaway is that they both can record for hours at a time and it's always worth carrying some extra batteries with you just in case. In addition to that, most of these devices tend to work with battery packs, which most people carry with them. Also, both the Zoom H5 and H6 have accessory packs which you can purchase separately, namely the APH5 and the APH6. Amongst other things, these contain a cable and an adapter so you can run the device off the mains. Speaking of accessories, if you do go ahead and purchase the APH5 or the APH6 accessory pack, you'll also get a windscreen which is quite handy when recording outdoors and a wired remote as well. The Zoom H5 is a bit smaller and lighter than the Zoom H6. This is important to consider if you plan on adding it on top of a DSLR which might already have a battery pack strapped to it. The actual dimensions for the Zoom H5 are 7.77 by 2.63 by 1.66 inches and it weighs 9.52 ounces or 269 grams. The Zoom H6 comes in at 14.46 ounces or 410 grams and measures 8.39 by 3.1 by 1.88 inches. Even though both are sturdy and rugged, it's worth to point out that the Zoom H6 is rather larger and heavier and this should be taken into consideration. Both devices are designed to be portable and the Zoom H5 comes in a cushioned plastic case. On the other hand, the new Zoom H6 Black doesn't come with a case at all. If you're looking for a soft case, have a look at the PCH5 and the PCH6. In terms of a more robust case, SKB makes really sturdy cases for both the Zoom H5 and the Zoom H6. The one that I bought for the H6 also has room for the device, the XY capsule, MS capsule, shotgun mic, dual input combo capsule, accessories and a windshield. When it comes to the displays, the H5 has a backlit LCD whilst the H6 has a much nicer 2-inch full-color LCD. Also, whilst the Zoom H6 screen is angled slightly down, the H5 is not. This is neither a good thing nor is it a bad thing, as it just depends on what you're using the device for. If you'll be looking down at the recorder, the Zoom H5 screen is better for that. If, on the other hand, the recorder will be closer to eye level, like if it were mounted on a DSLR camera, the H6 screen will allow you to monitor levels without having to move your camera too much in order to look at the screen. By the way, if you're finding this video to be helpful, don't forget to leave a like as it will help with the algorithm and other people will be able to find this video as well. And now, back to the video. 
Whilst both recorders offer phantom power, which is needed by condenser microphones, the Zoom H6 offers phantom power for all its four XLR inputs. If you plan on purchasing the EXH6 combo input capsule and connecting dynamic microphones to it, it should be fine, as dynamics do not require phantom power. On the other hand, if you're going to connect condensers, microphones plugged into the EXH6 will not receive phantom power. Regardless, make sure to look up whether or not your microphone requires phantom power in the first place before purchasing the capsule. Next up, I wanted to cover one of the more useful features of these two devices, and at the same time, discuss its unfortunate limitations. The Zoom H5 and H6 both have a feature called a minus 12 dB backup. What it does is when recording, it creates a version of the recording, which is specifically 12 dB quieter. The reason why you would want this is if you get too loud when recording and you get distortion, you can go into the minus 12 dB safety track and replace a distorted clip with a quieter, cleaner version. This sounds fantastic in theory, but there is a problem. When I first heard about this, my assumption was that this feature could be used on all the inputs, including the EXH6 combo inputs, or at the very least the built-in ones. As it turns out, this only applies to the left and right channels, so for instance on recordings that you capture with the XY capsule. As a result, you can't do this for a microphone or instrument plugged into any of the XLR slash TRS inputs. The strange thing about this is that I've seen quite a few conflicting opinions online. Some people say that they've managed to get backups of XLR microphones, others say that they can't. I assume that the ones that did get them used the EXH6 combo input capsule to plug in the XLRs. That might actually work, but that's a use case that only applies to a few people. This does not affect someone like me, who uses the Zoom H6 in conjunction with the SGH6 shotgun microphone capsule, but it would impact someone recording a podcast, for example. I assume this feature is incomplete due to a limitation in processing power. If you know a workaround for this, make sure to leave it down below in the comments. Now that the safety tracks have been addressed, I actually want to talk about setting healthy levels and how to avoid needing a backup track in the first place. Here is the simplest way I can describe setting levels. Peak as high as you can without actually clipping. In practical terms, you want to set your levels so that you don't really peak above minus 6 dB. Try to keep the average around minus 12 dB with softer sounds hitting around minus 20 dB. You'll find a lot of debate online as to how you should set this, but use the numbers I gave you and play around with your device until you get results that you like. When in doubt, it's better to set them too low than too high. If it's too high, your recording will be distorted, which will make it unusable. If it's too low, you'll get hiss in your recording, but that's better than the alternative, and it can even add character in the case of some instrumental recordings. When it comes to sample rate and bit depth, know that both devices can record up to 96kHz by 24-bit, and that that's way more than enough for most people. If you want to delve a bit deeper into sample rates and bit depth, check out my more recent reviews of the Zoom H5 and H6 from a few months ago. I don't want to keep repeating myself too much in these videos, so if you want, you can do a deep dive into those videos. The same actually applies to the capsules. Both devices have access to many capsules, which can be purchased separately. For the same reason as stated above, if you want to learn more about them, check out the two videos linked down below. As you might know if you've been watching my videos, I'm currently recording my voiceovers with the Zoom H6 and the SGH6. I switched to this from my older setup, which involved a Shure SM7B, a cloud lifter, and a Zoom H8. The reason is that it's far more portable, whilst delivering similar quality. The reason why I chose the SGH6 over just using the default XY capsule that came with it is because the SGH6 is far more directional. As a digital nomad, I travel around and I can't always know what the next Airbnb will sound like in terms of acoustics and noise. As a result, I use the highly directional SGH6, which will mostly just focus on my voice, and it will ignore the sound reflections coming from the side and other unwanted noise coming from the back. You can use the XY capsule that comes with this device, but you'll be capturing a lot more of the room instead of a more isolated sound. This can be a good or a bad thing, depending on the situation. 
Zoom H5 and H6 can also be used as an audio interface with your DAW of choice. All you have to do is go into menu, select USB and then audio interface. The device then gives you the option of either going via the route of a stereo mix or multi-track. Once you've done that, you'll have to select either PC slash Mac or PC slash Mac using battery power. If your computer can't supply enough power to the device when using phantom power, select PC Mac using battery power. This will use some of the battery in the H6 in order to provide phantom power. If you have to record outdoors, foam windshields will prove to be rather unhelpful. They're okay when recording indoors, but any gust of wind will make the recording unusable. You know what I'm about to say next, don't you? If you want a simple fix to that problem, Rycode sells a free-in-one solution for each recorder. I promise I'm not sponsored by Rycode. A grip by which you can hold the recorder, a shock mount which basically eliminates handling noise, and a good quality windshield which will protect the microphone from wind, though very strong winds might still affect the microphone. If you're curious, I've included links down below to all of the gear mentioned in this video so you can have a look. When it comes to level control, the Zoom H5 has a metal bar which makes it difficult to accidentally change the input levels. Whilst the H6 does have some measures in place in order to prevent that, the H5 method feels a lot more reliable as it is a large metal bar physically preventing you from making any changes. If you know you're likely to accidentally hit or run your hand over the recorder and change the levels, this might be something to take into consideration. The Zoom H5 and H6 do not have built-in guitar effects like the H4M Pro or the H8, but they do have built-in tuners. This is not something that I have ever used as I prefer to record my electric guitar tracks clean and then add effects later, but this is something that a lot of guitar players might be interested in. So, which one should you get? Ultimately, both recorders are very similar, but built for different purposes. They're both quite rugged and well-built, have good sound quality, modular microphones, and multiple XLR slash TRS inputs. If all you need is to connect a maximum of two microphones to it, like in a one-on-one -on -one interview setting, the Zoom H5 will suffice. That being said, if you think you might one day need to plug in a few extra microphones, it's worth spending a little bit of extra money and getting the Zoom H6. The price difference isn't massive, and by getting the Zoom H6, you're future-proofing yourself. Do you have any questions? Feel free to leave a comment down below, and I'll do my best to get back to you. If you'd like to purchase any of the items I've mentioned in this video, or see how much they cost in your country, I have a link down below where you can view them. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and hit that bell. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.